We are in chapter 14, and in chapter 14, there are four sections. In section 14.1, we're going to talk about sequences and series. <clears throat> now, these are some miscellaneous topics that we're going to take a look at. Section 14.2, for example, discusses arithmetic sequences and series. Section 14.3 talks about geometric sequences and series and section 4 the last section of chapter 14 talks about the binomial theorem in section 14.1 we're going to talk about sequences and series okay so um, here are the exercises for this section and I have the ones that are highlighted in yellow are the ones that are for your homework and of course you're welcome to do more of these and we will do uh, quite a few in this section, like the ones that are highlighted. And there's uh, a couple of more down here. Okay. And uh, I have one, number 13, on the other side. Again, you're welcome to do more than what's highlighted. So let's actually begin with uh, the idea of sequences and series. First, let's talk about sequences. Now, uh, before we actually look at sequence, I just want to talk about the function here. Let's say this is f of x, and we'll keep it simple, equal x squared. Okay, the basic parabola. Now, for this function, the domain of this function means what all x can be. Well, x can be negative infinity to infinity, right? It means x can be anything. You simply plug it in and square it and gives you the function value for any selection of x. Now, what if, what if I just focus, instead of all real numbers, what if I just focus on the set of natural numbers? So remember, our natural numbers, these are the set of uh, counting numbers. The natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, and so on. It is an infinite set. So what if our inputs are only natural numbers, not all real numbers? Well, if... If I create that restriction, then I can write this f of x instead as f of n, because now I'm using natural numbers, n for natural. And I can write it as n squared. It looks just like its counterpart above with all real numbers. Except this time, again, n is the set of natural numbers. And there you go. What I have done, in effect, is I have created a what we call a sequence. So sequence is nothing but a function, just like any other function that we've talked about in the course. The only restriction is that the domain is a set of natural numbers. That's the only thing. So um, the notation, by the way, f of n, that's the notation I like. But in your book, the author actually uses the notation a sub n, which is quite common to use for this sequences. And some textbooks actually do this. They have curly braces, a sub n, like that. So using these notation, I can write uh, f of n equal n squared as a sub n equal n squared. I can also write it this way. These all mean the same thing. Now, the a sub n here in this notation, a sub n, is we refer to this as the general term in the sequence okay so how is this going to work out well the general form of the sequence let's actually do this example and create some outputs from this so for example when n is one so f of one is going to be what one squared which is one when n is two f of two is two squared four f of three is three squared 9 and so on so you can see I can plug in 4 5 6 and so on and evaluate the function now the re the resulting sequence here of the outputs is 1 4 9 and so on okay so this is what the sequence actually looks like right in here this is what the sequence looks like so let's actually take a look at the book's definition of a sequence and there you go so Again, if you limit the domain, the, you restrict the domain of the function to the set of natural numbers, that's when you get sequences. 
And that's what this description reads, that the sequence, an infinite in this case sequence, the reason we have the word infinite here is because the set of natural numbers is infinite. So these are called infinite sequences. Notice that these are functions. It's a function whose domain is the set of natural numbers. Now, if we look at the, a finite number of terms in the sequence, don't go dot, dot, dot. In other words, notice in here that it actually terminates down here. It terminates with n. So if I look at right in here, so if I look at a finite number of terms in the sequence, then the sequence is called a finite sequence. Now this n could be any arbitrary number. I can choose 50, you can choose 1,000, somebody can use 5,000. It's however many terms we want to list in, in the sequence. Okay, so uh, this is, by the way, the general form of any sequence. You're going to have your first term, comma, second term, comma, third term, comma, and so on and so forth. Somewhere down the line, you have the nth term and so on in the case of infinite sequence. Again, a sub n here, it's called the nth term in the sequence. It is also known as the general term. Okay, so it's called nth term and it's also called general terms. We use those two terminologies interchangeably. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. This is um, an exercise in your book. So let's say in this exercise, I actually want to um, evaluate a sub eight. So we are given the general form and notice right in here, a sub eight is what we want to find. So a subscripted eight means the eighth term, right? That's what we mean. We want to find the eighth term. That's what the notation means. And we are given a formula for it, a function a sub n is 3n minus 4. So all I need to do is simply a sub n is 8, so I'm going to use color for n, the subscript. That's just going to be 3 times, and then remember n is 8. Uh, let me use color. So it's going to be 3 times 8, and then you subtract the 4. That's all you're doing. Pretty simple, huh? 3 times 8, that's 24 minus 4, so that would be 20. That would be what, what just happened here. This is just like doing the following. We just did f at 8, and that's all we did. f at 8 is 20, using function notation. But we use a, a notation with a subscript. So this would be the 8th term in the sequence. That's it. The answer is 20. Now, Exercise number 16. In number 16, we are given a sub n. The function is 3n plus 2 squared. And this time they want the sixth term, right? a sub 6 means a sixth term. That's what we want, the sixth term. So let me write that. So how are we going to do this? Just like the one above it, we're going to plug in a 6, 4, n. So this is going to be a sub 6, n is 6. And that's going to be equal to 3 times n, n is 6, and then plus 2 squared. And then we do the arithmetic. 3 times 6, 18, and 2 makes 20. 20 squared is 400. Again, what we just did is this. We did f evaluated at 6, and the answer is 400, using the familiar, the f notation. But that's not, uh, the book's not going to do that, just to let you know. The book's going to stay with the A notation. So A sub 6 is 400. The one above it, A sub 8 is 20. Okay, so let me just write these. Okay, and let's take a look at this, another variation of this exercise. Uh, in this exercise, we are given a function A sub n is 2n plus 1. And the question now reads, find the first four terms, and we want to find also, in addition to the first four terms, we want to find the tenth term. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a sub 1, uh, and then a, 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 I'm going to subscript these, 2, 3, 
4. It's easier if I write it this way. There you go. That's what they want. Find the first four terms. Well, the first four terms, a sub 1 means first term, a sub 2 second term, a sub 3 third, a sub 4 would be fourth term. Now, all we need to do is plug in for n in each of these. 2 times, see, I'm creating kind of like a template. And let me move a sub 4 over, actually. Um, and there you go, a sub four is there you go so now for the n in the function first time you plug in an, a one then you plug in a two then three then four and then you complete the expressions so a sub one two times one plus one that would be three a sub two two by two four and one makes five a sub three makes seven a sub four makes nine Okay, so looks like that's what that is. Now for the 10th term, a sub 10, all you got to do is plug in a 10. So that's going to be 2 times 10 plus 1, right? And 2 times 10 is 20. 20 plus 1 is 21. And there you go. That's all we're doing. It's pretty easy, folks. If you're given the form of the function, you're just plugging it into the function to get these different terms. There's nothing complicated about this, I hope. And now, the exercise number 28, here's another one. In number 28, we're going to do the same thing. We want to find the first four terms and then the 10th tenth, tenth term. So I'm going to go A um, equal... Let me give some room for this one. A equal, let me actually plug it in and see how much room is necessary here. So remember, n is um, 1, right? First first 4. So that's a, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4. So a sub 1 is going to be when you plug in a 1 for n numerator denominator. And we're simply going to do what the fraction says to do. Okay. Now, 1 squared minus 1 is 0. 0 over 2 is 0. So the first term is 0. Correct? Now, second term, that's when we plug in a 2 for n. And the second term is going to be also a fraction. And this time we're going to put a 2. 2 above, 2 below. First one, 2 squared minus 1. Second one, 2 squared plus 1 equals. Ooh, let me... My subscript kind of moved away from me. Okay, there you go. And then next step, 2 squared in the numerator. I mean, sorry, 2 to the first is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. In the denominator, we have 2 squared plus 1 is 5. And the next term, a sub 3. That's when you put 3 into this function. And let's put 3 on top, 3 on the bottom. We're going to... Uh, oh, actually, let's see. We're squaring these, aren't we? Uh, to this one. That's a squared. I know somebody caught that. It's, you were wondering if I was going to catch it, right? And I did. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. 2 squared minus 1, that would be 3, wouldn't it? 4 minus 1, 3. So that's 3 fifths. Now that's better. Okay, and then the third term that's going to be n squared minus one denominator n squared plus one so that's going to be nine minus one that's eight nine plus one is ten right eight tenths of course you can simplify it if you want that gives you what four fifths uh a4 is going to be done in a similar manner a4 is equal to Minus 1, plus 1, and then we're just going to put in the n. 4 here, 4 here. Square in the numerator, square in the denominator. In the numerator, I have 16 minus 1. In the denominator, I have 16 plus 1. 15 seventeenths. And there you have it. So that's how this is done. For the 10th term, okay, for this one. For the 10th term, we're going to do a similar work. So here, a sub 
10 is going to be uh, 10 squared on top, 10 squared on the bottom, right? 10 squared minus 1. Oops, sorry, the wrong color. That's going to be 10 squared minus 1, 10 squared plus 1. So that's going to make it 99 over 101. Okay, so it looks like the numerator is always 2 more than the denominator, huh? 15, 17, 99, 101. Okay, and 8 over 10 here. All right, and that's all. We're done with this exercise. So again, once we are given a function, it's pretty simple. Just a matter of plugging in, in for n and doing the arithmetic. Now, what if what if we were given a sequence and we were to we were to find the function for it? And that's what we want to look at next. So in this exercise, now take a good look at this one. We are given a sequence of numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay, that's what we're given. 1, 3, 5, 7. And in the exercise, it's worded actually exactly like I have in quotation. The exercise reads, look for a pattern and write an expression for a sub n, the nth term. Now, for these uh, exercises in this segment, folks, it, you really have to look for a pattern. Okay, so there's no formula. Like, can you give me a formula to do this? No, we don't have a formula. So pretty much whatever pattern you see, and of course this pattern may be, uh, you recognize this is the set of odd numbers, huh? There's the pattern in this one. These are odd numbers. Each successive term is two more than the previous term, right? So, for example, 3 is 2 more than 1. 5, 2 more. 7, 2 more than 5. So, next we're going to propose a formula. Okay, so here's a sub n, your starting point. Now, you're supposed to pick numbers. So, for example, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say n. Is that going to work? And the only way you can check your answer to see if you have this right or wrong is by trying your formula, your proposed formula, and see if it works or not. Okay. And of course, you can kind of bounce off of the exercise we have above number 24. Look at the pattern and the numbers in number 24. You see that? 3, 5, 7, 9, and we see something like this. So the answer is going to be something like what you're looking at. Okay. But in general, you're going to look for a pattern. So let's say uh, I'm going to say just n. Now, when n is 1, and remember, we always go 1, 2, 3, 4, set of natural numbers starting with 1. So if I plug in 1 in this one, um, let's see. I'm going to get, what am I going to get in this one? Okay, so let me plug in a 1 actually in this one. So I'm going to get 1. And then next number would be 2, so the sequence is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So clearly that's not what is on the left side, right? 1, 3, 5, 7. So here's where you begin to tweak it and see how it's going to work out. Let's say if I change that to now 2n, what is 2n going to look like? When n is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. When n is 2, 2 by 2 is 4. So 2 by 3 6. So actually this looks like the set of or sequence of even numbers, doesn't it? Now notice this, how close this is to 1, 3, 5, 7. In fact, look at the first number here, 1, and this is 2, 3, this is 4, 5, and this is 6. One more, one more, one more. Each, each term is one more than what I need. So if I subtract one from this, that should do it for me, shouldn't it? Right? Let's try it now. Let's try this one. So I'm going to plug in a 1, a sub 1. And that's going to be 2 times, uh, sorry, let me use different color. And that's going to be 2 times n is 1. So it's going to be 1 minus 1. And that's 1. And there you go. That's what we wanted right in here, 1. Let's see when n is 2. That's going to be a sub 2. And that's going to be equal to 2 by 2 minus 1, doesn't it? Now 2 times 2 minus 1, that's 4 minus 1, 3. Aha. Uh -huh. This is the next term, isn't it? So it looks like it's picking it up. 
And when n is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 1 is going to be 5. And then 2 times 4, 8 minus 1, 7. There you go. So this is how we're going to figure this out there. It's called trial and error. So we try something and it doesn't work and we try again. Again, that's the only way you can do this. Okay. That's why the problem also reads, look for a pattern. So it's definitely more challenging than the problems directly above it, right? You're given a function, we plug them into it. That's easy. But if you're given a sequence, such as the one that you see here, then it's going to be more challenging because now we're going to be the ones who think about the formulas that, that are capable of producing these terms. Let's take a look at number 38. Now in number 38, that's interesting. You get 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. So how is this going to work out again? And if you want, uh, you can pause the video and actually see if you can think of a function that can do this before you see the answer. Now, <clears throat> for this one, um, ignoring the negatives. So in other words, this is what I'm seeing. 1, 1, 1, and 1. Looks like no matter one, what, what n is, the output is always 1, right? So as n goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and so on, this is always 1. Okay, well, um, I guess isn't 1 to any power 1? 1 to the n power 1? So it looks like that's probably going to be the function, isn't it? Now, and of course, as you can see here, 1 to the nth power always gives you 1. This actually alternates in signs, right? The sequence alternates in signs. So it goes 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and so on. So first term, positive 1. Third term, positive 1. Fifth term, 7th, 9th, 11th, and so on. All of those are going to be 1s. And it looks like the even terms, 2nd, 4th, 6th, and so on. These are going to be negative, right? So our formula should be sensitive to that, to where when n is odd, it's going to be positive. When n is even, it's going to be negative. So we're going to adjust this formula that's, and make it capable of doing that. And how we do it is actually this way. So I'm going to go 1. Actually, I'm going to go negative 1 to the nth power and let's see how that works so when n is 1 I get negative 1 to the first which is negative 1 oops negative 1 but we actually want this to start with a positive 1 right first term is positive here okay right in here first term is positive in here so we I need to tweak this one what if I go and plus 1. Okay, when I go n plus 1 now, let me try it now and see how it's going to come out. I'm going to erase this one and try it again. So now it's going to be, when n is 1, 1 plus 1, that's negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared is 1. Aha, there you go. So the first term is 1. Now when n is 2, the second term, negative 1 to 2 plus 1 that's negative 1 cubed and negative 1 cubed means negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 and that's of course negative 1 so perfect looks like we picked up the second term also didn't we okay this is the second term and you can try uh, n3 when you plug in an n3 in here this becomes 3 plus 1, 4. Negative 1 to the even power is all, uh, positive. So that's going to be 1. Looks like this is going to pick it up. So we're going we're gonna to buy this one. The answer to this exercise is negative 1 to the n plus 1. Now, you can also see that for this particular one, if you do negative 1 to the n minus 1, that also works negative 1 to the n minus 1 will also work and let me verify these now okay the one that i just did let me verify this one negative 1 to the n minus 1 that one so i'm gonna go n1 that's negative 1 
1 minus 1, negative 1 to 0, any number other than 0 to 0 power is 1. When n is 2, I have negative 1 to 2 minus 1, that's negative 1 to the first power, that's negative 1. You see how that's also picking it up? I'm starting with 1 positive, second term negative 1, and that's exactly what the sequence is. So again, both of these are acceptable answers. Now, you might want to make a note of this exercise. It's an important one. Because if you see a sequence where the signs on the terms alternate from positive to negative, from positive to negative to positive to negative, then you have some form of negative 1 to a power of either n plus 1 or n minus 1 or n depending on if this starts with negative 1 or positive 1. Okay, um, so keep that in mind. If your sequence alternates plus minus plus minus or minus plus minus plus, you have some variation of this answer along with something else. Let's take a look at this exercise, for instance, right in here. In this exercise, notice they alternate. I have negative 1, 2, negative 3, 4, negative 5. So the fact that it's alternating, the sequence is alternating, the negative, we're going to attribute that to a power. So I'm going to write negative 1 to the end for star this. Now look at negative 1 to the end, by the way. Negative 1 to the end. When n is 1, negative 1 to the first power is negative 1. When n is 2, negative 1 squared is 1. So it looks like I'm picking up starting the sequence with negative 1 here, second one positive, third would be negative, fourth positive, and so on. But the key is that negative 1 to the n starts with a negative term, and that's exactly what I have here, right? I have a negative 1 here. So I'm going to keep that negative 1 to the n. This is going to take care of negative here, negative here, negative here, and so on. Now, forget the signs now. So in other words, once you're done with that, just see the sequence as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 now. You see that? Just think of it as this. And that looks like just a set of natural numbers, doesn't it? Times, I'm just going to multiply by n. And there you go. You can try it and see that this works. When n is 1, you get 1 here. When n is 2, you get 2, n3, this 3, n4, 4, and so on. And this picks up the sign in front of them. So that's going to be the answer to this exercise. There you have it. You see, there's no formula for these folks. It's looking for a pattern. That's the only way we can do this. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this one, this next exercise. Again, we're looking for a pattern, okay? So we're doing one times, two times, three times, four times. Now, the way I just sounded, one, two, three, four. Aren't those the natural numbers? So we have some kind of a natural number in here. And look at the three here. The relationship between one and three, two and four, three and five, four and six. Now, again, you might want to pause the, the lecture and see if you can actually come up with your own pattern and write it out and see if it is what we're going to get in a minute. So, the fact that, again, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that means I have some kind of n in here, right? So, I'm just going to put n here times. Now, right next to 1 is 3. That's two more. Next to two, four. Two more. Next to three, five. Two more. Two more. So when it comes to n, it's going to be two more also with that, isn't it? n times n plus two. So that's going to be the nth term. These are all the nth terms, by the way. Okay, that's what these are. These are the function forms. And again, by looking at the pattern. So that's the answer to this exercise. Hopefully you were able to do this one also, like we did. Okay. And 
Okay, let me scroll. Oh, good. Let's take a look at this one. You can notice how it alternates, right? Between one positive, negative, positive, negative. Well, positive, negative, positive, negative. Isn't that number 38? All right, sorry, I don't know. This keeps popping up. Number 38, see positive, negative, positive, negative. So that's going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1. Now, if you go negative 1 to the n minus 1, you're also correct. The one right next to it. So that, again, takes care of the sign. And now you have to worry about, well, how can I get this sequence? So this is what I see at this point. 1, 4, 9, 16. And again, if you want, pause the video and then see if you can actually come up with a function that can do this. Remember, whatever you propose for your function, you plug in a 1 for n and you should get 1 the first term. You plug in a 2, you should get a 4. You plug in a 3, you should get 9. Plug in a 4, you get a 16 and so on. And by the way, if you were to predict what the next term in this would be, what do you think it would be? 1, 4, 9, 16. What will this next term be? 25, isn't it? So again, if you predicted or guessed 25 means you actually got this. So these are actually, these look to be n squared. True? Again, when n is 1, 1 squared is 1. There you go. Let me rewrite it actually in this form. You will see 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, dot, dot, dot. That's what these are. Okay, and there is the answer to this one. We're good on this one. Number 50. So, hopefully you can now try the ones that you're doing in the exercises by looking for the pattern. You're doing numbers 35 and number 45. Okay, now in the next segment here, we're going to talk about uh, series. Now, remember, the general form of an infinite sequence is like this. A sub 1, 2, 3, 4, and A sub n. And again, A sub n here, this is called the general term or the nth term that's what it's called now if we add the terms of a sequence the result is going to give you a series so series that's when you add either infinite or finite number of terms in a sequence and since you're adding these usually the answer to these is going to be a single number if it exists Notice in the case of dot dot dot, the sum, the sum may not exist. Or it may exist, who knows, depending on how the math works. So series, just like sequences, this is an example of an infinite series, right? And it's right in here. The reason, because of the dot dot dot. In other words, I'm adding infinitely many terms together. Now, the sum of infinite series, we write it like that. That's S sub. And the symbol you see here, of course, is the infinity symbol. So, S sub infinity, again, this means sum to infinity. Okay, and that's what that is, sum to infinity. That's what it's called. Now, sometimes we don't want sum to infinity. We want just the sum of the first few terms. And now we're talking about the partial sum. So for the partial, again, partial means a portion of total. So the partial sum is going to be limited to the first few terms. You see that? Oops. I just didn't want to highlight it in red. There you go. That's what that is. So you start with the first term. Second, third, you add them up all the way up to the nth term here. So you actually have a finite number of terms. Again, I could be adding the first 10 terms, the first 20 terms, 100 terms, 600 terms, and so on in a series. And in that case, it's called a partial sum. Okay, now these partial sums are finite, right? These are finite series because they terminate at some point. They stop at a sub n. 
So let's take a look and see how we're going to actually do this. In exercise number 52, we are given a sequence. The notation S sub 10, that means find. Remember, S sub n means the nth partial sum. It's right here. You see that? Right in here. Using that notation, S sub n means the partial sum. So we want the 10th. That's what this means. We want 10th partial sum. 10th partial sum, that means the sum of the first 10 terms. So first I need to write out the first 10 terms and then add them. 2 plus 4, negative 4, plus 6, negative 8, plus 10. What will the next one be? Negative 12. Uh, plus, next one would be what? Continue, continue on on the pattern. We get 14. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I need 3 more. Negative 16, 18, negative 20, right? Isn't that what that is? I call that S subscript 10. That's what we're doing. So just to make sure again that I have these correctly, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 terms. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, looks good. Now if I add up all the positive ones and then subtract all the negative ones from it, I should be able to do this, right? So all the positive ones, that means this is 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, right? I'm adding these. Okay, and I don't need the parentheses there. Only on negative ones, I like parentheses on those. Okay, all the positive numbers. Now, here's how I'm adding them, by the way, guys. Um, 18 and 2, that's 20. 14, 6, 20, and 10. So that's 20, 20, 40, and 10, 50, isn't it? That's one way of doing it, or you can use your calculators. I don't like using calculators, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Didn't mean to get rid of the two. All right, so got rid of that. Get rid of this one. Get rid of, rid of, and rid of the green. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing with what you call it, with the negative numbers. Now, on the negative side, I'll check this out. Negative 8, negative 12, that's 20. Negative 4 and negative 16, that's 20. <laughs> so I got 20, 20, 40, and this 20 makes 60, doesn't it? So that is negative of uh, 60. Okay. And it looks like the total is going to be what? Negative 10, true? I'm going to get the blue marks out, and the answer is going to be negative 10. And there you have it. So s sub 10 the answer to s sub 10 is negative 10 that means if you add the first 10 terms the total is going to be negative 10. that's what the nth partial sum is okay let's look at this one number 54. in number 54 we're doing 3 6 9 12 15 and so on s sub 6 now right that means the six partial sum so how is this going to work? Well, S sub 6 means 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and okay. What do you think the 6th term is going to be? Look at the pattern. Going from 3 to 6 to 9 to 12 to 15. Looks like each time we are, what are we doing each time? We are adding 3, aren't we? 3 to 6. You go add 3 to 3, you get 6. Add 3 to 6, you get 9. 3 to 9, 3 to 15. So I guess it makes sense. The next one, you add 3 to 15, right? That Shouldn't that be 18? And there you have it. <clears throat> and then we add them again, right? So how am I going to add these? Let's see. This time, I'm going to be creative again. <laughs> Uh, let's see, these two, those add to 30, right? 
that's 15 and 15 these two add to 30 and then 3 looks like 63 again please verify I think that's that seems to be right correct uh, so I got 63 and there you have it so this partial sum of the first six terms is going to be 63 in this exercise and that is our final answer and let's see okay <clears throat> so we're good with this one hopefully you are able to follow this now the last idea of this section is a summation notation so let's talk about the summation notation summation notation now in notation in math means a way of writing something <clears throat> it's an agreement to write something in a certain form it's a notation now we're going to use sigma sigma this is greek sigma and sigma represents summation notation or some call it sigma notation so we have summation notation or sigma notation uh, both of those are uh, acceptable sigma notation <clears throat> now how does this sigma work well this there are two sigmas in greek alphabet by the way this is one of them the other sigma is this one now this other sigma they use it in statistics both of these again are sigmas but this one we're not going to use they use this in statistics because of science and engineers use them also so if you take statistics you will definitely see that sign or symbol so let me erase this since we're not going to work with that now here's how this sigma works sigma is what we call a math operator so if it's an operator what exactly does it operate on it operates on the expression that lies in front of it okay so here's how this works let me let me make up an example here okay so let's say my sigma looks like this i have sigma and in front of it i have just x then i'm going to put subscript i and i'm going to make i equal one and just go to four up here okay so how this is how our sigma is going to look like okay now let me give you the anatomy of this sigma notation well the i here this i is called the index of summation some people use i some use j some use k and whatever it doesn't matter these are dummy letters we use so if i use j or k is just as good as i now the number one in front of it is called the lower limit and that lower limit usually starts with one or zero usually doesn't have to it can start at 50 or it could start at negative five but usually it's going to start with one for us especially if you take again statistics that would be one in statistics and the number four up here this number is called the upper limit of that summation notation okay so every sigma has an index a lower limit and an upper limit now the expression in front of it this is what oops sorry this is what actually this operator operates on is it operates on the expression in front of it on xi so how is this going to operate on xi this is how it's going to do so we begin with the lower limit i1 and i'm going to plug in a one for i the subscript okay because the lower limit is one that's why we then add y because this is how this operator operates it's the mere presence of sigma is a command to add okay so i'm gonna have plus now next time around we're going to increment or increase i by one so we start with one and then you increment by one so that means next time around i is two so second time around i'm gonna have x sub 2 and then plus y because that's what sigma means 
and then next time you increment i by one more plus one more and so on so when do we stop well you stop when the subscript matches the upper limit okay so in this case we have four right up here four we have four down here that's that's why we stop and look at this expression A nice pattern that you see x sub one sub two sub three sub four so what sigmas do in general for us sigma allow us to write these lengthy expressions in a more concise form that's what they allow us to do and this is what i said like the uh, one usage of this would be in statistics this is how they use it so x sub one for example could be my test score x sub two your test score x sub three someone else's test score and so on or x sub one could be my exam number one x sub two score on exam number two x sub three score exam three x sub four score on exam four so it looks like i'm adding these right my test scores in this case but just wanted to point out again this is how this summation notation works now if you're given something in sigma notation again it's easy to write it out right this is the expanded form when you write it out it's easy you just plug them in for i you increment count add increment count out like that but sometimes like before when we had to look for a pattern to get the function we will be given an expression and they ask us to write it in sigma notation so that may be a little more challenging to do okay but nevertheless nonetheless that's something that's doable we can do that okay now let's take a look at actually an example okay and for this example we're gonna write out the summation notation okay in this example i'm just making this up let's say the sum is from one to three of something simple 2k plus three so let's write this out see what this means now you start with one and you end with three so i go one two three i need three expressions don't i here's one here's two and here is three every one of these has two plus three two plus three and two plus three see i'm looking at the pattern and then k in here right k starts with one then two then three see how that works and then do the arithmetic two times one two plus three five four plus three seven six plus three nine there you go that's all that is 21 so we just uh, evaluated the sum so that's all the sigma is when we write them out this is what they are it's pretty easy to write them out now let's take a look at something um, kind of like your exercises uh, let's try numbers maybe 61 in the exercises in number 61 the expression is k from 1 to 8 of negative 1 to k plus 1 times 2 to the k power okay now for this one i'm going to have what 8 expressions right eight of them because we go from one to eight that's why right and uh, let's see we begin with so i'm gonna actually get ready for eight expressions in here <coughs> it's gonna be uh negative one let's see i'm creating my template first folks okay first one uh second one and next one and so on okay now k is one so this is going to be one two to the first two two here three three here you see that and what is the last one going to be the eighth one it's going to be negative one to the eight times two to the eight right eight plus one two to the eight plus one that's two to the k plus one 
Oh, sorry, it's not plus one. It's just k plus one. Uh, let me backtrack here. Okay, so it's going to be negative one, two, k is eight. So it's going to be eight plus one times two to the k, k is eight. There, that's what it's going to be. So just to write these out. So let, first, let's do the signs, right? Negative one to the power of one plus one is two. Negative one squared, positive one. The next term, negative one to two plus one. Well, two plus one is three. Negative one cubed is negative one. Negative one to even powers is positive. Negative one to odd powers is negative one. Okay, so this series is going to start with positive, negative, right? Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, like that. The first number, 2 to the k, k is 1. 2 to the first power, 2. Second one is 2 squared, 4. Then 2 cubed, 8. 2 to the fourth, 16. 32, 64, 120. How many I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One more. 120 times 2 is 256. And there you go. Those are the eighth turns. And like before, we can actually combine these if we can see a pattern. 2 and 8, uh, 30, 128. Okay, well, 128 and 2, that's 130. 32 and 8, that would be 40. So that's 170 positive. I'm sure you'll check and see, make sure I got it right. So that's 170. And then on the negative side, we're going to subtract let me get rid of these now we're going to do the same thing for negative ones right now you're welcome to use a calculator by the way i'm not using a calculator that's why so again 14 and 16 that's negative 20. 64 and 256 that's going to be you see 320 right and 320 and 20 340 negative 340. Now, 340 is twice 170, isn't it? So the answer to this is going to be negative 170. That's what that turns out to be. There's the answer to this exercise. Okay. Number 61. Now, let's take a look at number 64. Okay. In number 64, this one, the expression k 0 to 5 the expression in front of k is k squared negative 3k plus 4 okay so we're going to begin again with k 0 1 2 3 4 5 like that so i'm gonna have to need what um i'm gonna need five of these right so it's gonna be k begins with zero so that's zero squared negative three times zero plus four plus 1 squared, negative 3 times 1 plus 4, plus 2 squared, negative 3 by 2 plus 4, plus 3 squared, uh, negative 3 times 3 plus 4, right? I started with, oh, notice, by the way, your lower limit starts with 0, not 1 this time. So there are actually 6 terms in this one, right? Because we start with 0. So let's see, I got the zeros here, then I got go to one, two, three. I still need to go to four and five, don't I? Plus, uh, and I'm plugging in four, that's four squared negative three by four plus four. And one last one is five squared negative three times five plus four. There. And uh, there you have it, see, 4 and 5. So I started with lower limit 0, went all the way to the upper limit of 5. Now let's, let's do the arithmetic of everything inside each parenthesis. So first print set of parentheses here we have is um, this one. We're doing this one first. So that's going to be 0 plus 4, that's 4. Plus the next one, that's negative 3 plus 4, 1 and 1, 2 plus next one 
This is going to be what? Uh, 4 and 4, 8 minus 6, 2 plus. And then it's going to go 3 squared, 9 minus 9, 0, and plus 4 is 4. Next one is going to be 4 squared, 16, and 4, 20. 20 take away 12, that's 8. And the last one is, let's see, 25 take away 15, that's 10 and 4, 14. Boy, imagine if they gave us uh, these numbers and they said, you find out, you figure out what the expression was. That would have been a heck of a problem, huh? Okay, well, let's work this one out. Now, let's see how we're going to work this one. Um, okay, so here's 6 and 14, right? That's 20. And then there's 10 plus 4 in the middle. So it looks like 34. That's what it should be. Okay, again, please verify, make sure I got it right. All right, that was number 64. So again, given sigma, we should be able to write them out. Now let's look at the last segment in this section. And that's when they give us the series and they ask us to write it in summation notation. So in number 68, we have one over one squared, one over two squared, one over three squared. And remember, we wanna look for a pattern okay that's what we want to do look for a pattern alrighty <clears throat> and again if you want feel free to pause the video and see if you can come up with a pattern for this one okay and there we go you have clear uh, notebook here so they shouldn't distract you so pause it see if you can come up with something on a piece of paper okay now here's the pattern I'm looking at. For, for one thing, everything is this, in the numerator, by the way. There's just one, isn't it, every time? Looking at the numerator, right? We have, what do we have here? We have one, 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 one. So definitely we have one in the numerator. In the denominator, everything is a squared, 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 right? Now you go one, two, three, four, five, true? Oh, let me actually didn't do this right. Okay, we want to write it in summation notation. So I'm going to put sigma here. And now in front of it, we're going to have one over. Okay, so because the numbers again, the numbers go one, two, three, four, five, and so on, like that. So I'm just going to go that's what's changing right the variable that's my k so i'm going to go k squared where k begins with one and it runs to five doesn't it and you can see when you plug it in that it's going to work once you put k one in my answer one squared so this is going to be c one squared that's when k is 1. When you put 2, you get 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. That should work. There is number 68 for you. Now let's take a look at, for instance, uh, something like number 72. In number 72, we have 9 minus 16 plus 25 plus dot, dot, dot. And actually for this one, they did us a great huge favor they gave us the expression there you go this is the nth term when they give us the nth term it's pretty easy because here's why we we're supposed to see a pattern in here well this is the pattern that you're supposed to see okay now our task is to write this in sigma notation so the n here in sigma notation the n actually turns into a k so i have negative one two k plus one over k squared now let's see if i start with one the lower limit with one this k squared here it's going to become one squared which is one right when k is two two squared four k three three squared nine next one 16 25 and so on right 
Now look at the first three terms. 9, 16, 25. So I don't need k to be 1. I don't need it to be 2. So we don't have those two terms, do we? So what I need to do actually is I need to pick things up from here. And that's when k is 3. So this is going to go k equal 3. You see how that worked? Try it. When you put 3, this becomes 3 squared 9. So you actually are starting uh, in the middle of the sequence, not from the beginning. And now for this one, it goes up to the nth term, right? Whatever the nth term is, we don't know what n is. Could be 5, could be 100, could be a million, right? So the upper limit for this one is going to be n because we don't know how high it's going to go. We just know that it's going to terminate, right? It stops here. So this is actually a finite series because it, it ends with the nth term. Now let's take a look at another one. This was number 72. Let's take a look at number 74. How's that one? Let's take a look at 74. In number 74, the expression is 11 plus 22, 33, 44. You get the idea how this goes, right? The next one will be like 55, 66, 77, 88, blah, blah. Now, so for this one, notice because every term is a factor of 11, so that should help us. And again, if you want, pause the video and see if you can figure this out, then if you can or cannot, come back and check your answer. So I'm going to, if I factor an 11 here, I get 1, 2, 3, 4. So I kind of see the underlying uh, hidden series within this one, right? Aren't these a set of natural numbers? N, when N is 1, when N is 2, 3, 4. So for this one, I'm going to go 11 times K. And k starts with 1, 1 times 11, 11, 2 times 11, 22, and so on. Now, this one, it doesn't stop, right? It's go, it goes to infinity. There are infinite number of terms in this series. So as a result, I'm going to put infinity up there. So number 74 is an infinite series. Okay. Let's take a look at the last one and we'll be done with this section in number 76. Number 76 again equals 1 over 1 times 2 squared plus 1 over 2 times 3 squared. And see if you can guess what the next one's going to be. 3 times 4 squared. What about the next one? We go 1, 2, 3. Next one should be 4. And then we went 2, 3, 4, next one, next to that should be 5. So notice the relationship between these two numbers, these two, these two, right? The one to the right is one more than the one on the left, isn't it? So again, th things like this pattern, the key is the pattern to find the pattern here. So I'm going to go sigma. Oh, actually, sorry, it's too soon. This one is an infinite series also because it goes plus dot, dot, dot. So what are we going to write for this one? We're going to write sigma. It's going to be a fraction, right? Look at the numerator, folks. One, 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 one. It's always one, isn't it? So because it's always one, therefore, I'm just going to go put one in the numerator. What's changing are the numbers in the denominator, right? So we start with 1, then 2, 3, 4, and so on. So that's going to be my k, isn't it? k, and I'm going to make k go from 1. Okay, so that's k1 times. Now next to that, the relationship between 2 and 1. One more, one more, one more, right? So that's going to be what? k plus 1 then. So we're going to go k times k plus 1, and that's going to be the denominator. And because it's dot, 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 
means to infinity right and therefore because of that we're gonna write the upper limit to be infinity there you have it and that should be the answer to this exercise there you go and with that we are done in this section again it's kind of a tedious section because the parts where you have to guess right you look for a pattern and do it if you don't feel 100% on this don't worry you're not alone usually my experience is the first time around not everybody gets this but once you practice with it uh, then it should become hopefully hopefully much easier than it is so with that we are done in section so we're done in section 14.1 and that will conclude this lecture